Hi everyone, welcome to this video. And yes, yet again another being poor attempt video. I don't want you to get bored, not at all. This was actually something that I did on the same day when I did the wing poor session, which I've showed you last time in the video. But I did not really think this one would have fitted the entire piece. And the fifth one in one video might be too much as well. <laughs> So I wanted this one to be a standalone video and also answering some of your questions from the last video here as well. So I'm still getting many questions when it comes to the uh, cup tool that you can see here. And I get asked about the sizes, the milliliter filling, the shape, whatever. So many questions on this. And to be honest, don't overthink it too much. I did not as well. I just grabbed three of these yeah, cups, what I had here around, fitting into each other. I really did not think about sizes, measurements. I just wanted them to fit into each other, have some spare space in between that you can hold a paint in them, and that's basically all. And the important thing that seems to be important <laughs> is that they are all almost the same height. So you want your paint to flow out the same time, and even if they are not the same height, just fill them the same height with paint so that all the paints comes out almost at once when you tilt it. So this seems to be a relevant factor, but again, this is all entirely highly experimental. So just grab whatever canisters you have or prepare them to make them fit together. If you have larger ones, just cut them to size or use whatever yogurt cups you can get. Just give it a go with the ones you have. There's no need to to buy some fancy special stuff. But if you need, as a reference, the small cup into the center of this tool thingy is a plastic shot glass. So really just a shot. And yeah, so make up your mind what you can use for it. And other than that, you can see me using a reused canvas here again. It is painted in phthalo blue. So this is the really cool dark blue that I love so much. And I also have this blue in the cup besides as a white and a gold. This blue, once it is wet, it really looks much, much lighter. It is going to try as dark as the base layer is there, and I just painted it to have a base layer in case some of the pour is not opaque enough. So what I wanted to do again is trying the failed ring pour, which I did at the very first attempt, which ended up really beautiful. And as always, I will show you a picture here in the video and also make a link to the video here as well. And this actually I want to try to recreate using the same ring pour method, but just tilting it differently. So this time I want it to look royal. So I really love this blue, white and gold color combination along as the black and white and gold, because it always works for me. And I want to see if I can make it as pretty and a bit more royal looking than the white and gold was on its own. Yeah, I just fill all the colors in my little tiny cup thingy there and start pouring. As you can see, I added plenty of white this time, so if it would have worked out becoming a white wing, all good. I would have pretended that was the goal. <laughs> but as you can see, it does not really work so that it could have become a wing, which was perfectly fine. This was not a goal here, but it, it could have worked perhaps. But I think the white was too thin for that. And so I started pouring all on the canvas and it just, yeah, it, it is what it is. And then you basically just tilt the canvas in a different angle than you would do for the, the wings. So for the wings, you basically just stretch the paint around to not alter the shape as much, which oftentimes doesn't work. <laughs> and this time I just wanted the paint to flow over the edges to have a cool design on the canvas, which worked beautifully. I was really proud about this result. Before pouring, of course, I added some of the blue paint directly on the canvas just to help the paint flow over easily. If you don't do that, there is no need to do this, but your paint will grab more to the canvas when you tilt it and when you stretch the paint. So the paint actually rolls over, if you can say that, and it just makes a different shape. So by now having this base layer of paint on your canvas, the poured on paint can actually flow easily and glide over this base layer and it just keeps its shape better in terms of the design that you're pouring. So if you would not have used this base layer paint, the design would just be a different one. It could have been a better one, it could have been a worse one, no one else, no one knows. <laughs> 
but this is what it looks like and you can see the difference from the blue paint so the the red against the white version how much darker it is and this is something you will see in the end result photo that i will add to this video as well because here you can only see the red version of the paint so the much much lighter one and how different it looks when the paint is dried i really really love the end result when it was dry and it had this pretty large blue area. I also thought about adding some gold leaf onto this or making some Posca lines, but I really did not want to mess up. And in a way, I really liked the end result of this and how it looked. It looked royal, which was my goal. So I was pretty happy about it. And now, of course, I want to know your thoughts. If you liked this, if you tried it yourself and saved your ring by this technique as well, or what you probably would have done differently. If you liked the color palette, just as usual, let me know your thoughts. I'm really happy to read them and to reply to as many as I can. And yeah, besides of that, this was just an addition to my last video to not put it in there as design was a different one and I wanted it to be a different one. For now, these are all the wing pours that I did. I have more stuff coming, of course, in the coming videos and there will be more realism in the next videos as well. Because I had a couple of commissions which I filmed and yeah, I will show you some portrait stuff and landscape-ish things. So I hope you enjoy those as well. And of course, more pouring is also coming along with some resin projects that are on the way. And everything that you have to do is just to subscribe to my channel to not miss out any of them. <laughs> Also, thank you so much for those requests that you sent me over time to make in coming videos. I have them on a list, so I will try to make as many as possible. Of course, it might take a while until I can bring them to life because of my planned out videos and videos that I want to show first and then, you know, but they will come. I will try to make as many as I can from the requests. And yeah, this is basically it for this video. As usual, I hope you enjoyed watching and had a good time watching. If you want to know which materials I've used, I have linked them all in the video description below, as well as my social media if you want to get in touch with me. If you want to see my artwork hanging in your homes, of course, I would be super happy and therefore my Etsy store is also linked in the video description down below. And of course, if you're new to my channel and have not yet subscribed, I really would love if you do though. Because more stuff is coming, plenty of already great stuff is here on this channel, I think. <laughs> and yeah, please also give me a thumbs up and share this video with everyone who wants to see it or you think wants to see it. This will really help my channel grow and yeah, it's just nice to see that your video is watched. Yeah, enough rambling for this video. It should have been a quicker one, but it's again about 10 minutes. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And other than that... I see you in my next videos. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye bye.